Hello, I'm Gina Martin Adams, Chief Equity Strategist for Bloomberg Intelligence, the research division of Bloomberg LP. I'm here to talk a little bit about the outlook for stocks. Global equities had a pretty great 2020, all things considered, but gains were still quite concentrated in the S&P 500 and specifically in large cap growth stocks. We anticipate that gains should broaden to other groups and the S&P 500 should pass the baton, so to speak, to other areas of the global equity market in 2021. In particular, we see three areas of opportunity in the year ahead. Small caps, emerging market equities, and value equities all offer tremendous discounts relative to their counterparts in large caps, developed markets, and growth stocks. This graph shows these valuation discounts have been accumulating over a considerable period of time. It's not really just about the coronavirus meltdown of 2020 suppressing valuations, but over the last decade or so, all three of these groups have lost share to their counterparts. As you can see in this graph, we've normalized price to book multiples across the spectrum of, uh, of equity markets to get a sense for where multiples are trading. By the time small caps reached their low in early 2020, they were trading at 50% of their usual discount to large cap stocks. A tremendous opening of valuation gap had occurred. Likewise, value stocks have just seen constant depletion in, in valuations over the course of the last 10 years, to the point where at their low in 2020, they were trading more than two standard deviations below the norm. And emerging market equities, of course, reached a point in 2020 where they were trading at roughly 2001 levels relative to developed markets. So the valuation gaps that emerged over the course of the last several years do set a really constructive backdrop for rotation. Clearly, we need a catalyst for rotation into these groups, though. And we see that catalyst as several fold. First, the earnings landscape is improving materially for these segments of the equity markets. As you can see in this next exhibit, small cap earnings growth should outpace large cap earnings growth. Indeed, small cap stocks should post earnings growth that surpasses large cap stocks growth for the first time since 2017 in the year ahead. Likewise, emerging market stocks growth should truly crush developed markets growth in earnings over the course of 2021, at least according to Bloomberg consensus estimates. And then, of course, value stocks, which normally don't outpace growth, but we're anticipating they will outpace growth stocks EPS over the course of 2021. This constructive earnings backdrop is also supported by improving macroeconomic conditions for all three of these groups. Back in April 2020, 2020 our models suggested that we should get a little bit more optimistic about the outlook for small cap shares. The reason being the monetary and fiscal policy landscape changed. This graph shows small caps relative to large cap stocks and their performance from 2020's low plotted next to their performance from 2009's low. You can see that the graphs are really moving closely hand in hand. And this is not coincidental. Back in 2009, you may recall, the Federal Reserve's balance sheet expanded by 85% over the course of the next five years as the Fed Department embarked upon the then experimental quantitative easing program. The Fed balance sheet already has expanded by 75% over just the course of the last year. Likewise, in 2009, we saw the American Reinvestment and Recovery Act add another $800 billion to the economic landscape through federal, federal fiscal stimulus. In 2020, we saw $3 trillion of spending emerge and we likely will see more into 2021. This combination of very supportive monetary and fiscal policy in 2020 compares quite closely to 2009 and may imply an enduring period of outperformance for small caps is starting to emerge. The macroeconomic landscape for value stocks is equally as supportive. We find that a few factors really drive value performance relative to growth, all of which have been somewhat suppressed over the course of the last 10 years, but we might be at a turning point. Interest rates and commodity prices are those two strong drivers of value performance. Over time, as you can see in this exhibit, value stocks are very positively correlated with long-term interest yields or the yields on the 10-year treasury. 
as long as 10-year Treasury yields are rising, value stocks tend to perform reasonably well relative to growth. But in an environment where 10-year Treasury yields were falling, as has been the case really for the better part of a decade, value stocks struggle. Over the last year, we've seen interest rates start to rise, and we think that we're likely to see continuous gains in interest rates reflecting an improvement in economic conditions and emerging inflation pressures. This should help value stocks considerably. Likewise, commodity prices are a huge input for value performance. When energy prices, agriculture prices, and metals prices are rising, value stocks tend to perform reasonably well. Part of this is the inflation issue that we just discussed with respect to yields. But part of it is also that 30% of the market cap of the value index is somewhat levered to rising commodity prices. That includes energy stocks, material stocks, industrial stocks, and utility stocks, which make an outsized share of value. Finally, and certainly last but not least, is the emerging market theme. Over the last decade, emerging markets have really struggled relative to developed market stocks, especially relative to U.S. stocks. Part of the reason for that is certainly the dollar. In an environment in, risk, risk, in which risk tolerance is improving, the dollar should decline. We started to see that in 2020, and we should continue to see that in 2021 as risk tolerance starts to normalize with the return to work, with the return to economic, condition, economic growth conditions. As this graph shows, the two move very closely together and in opposite. When the dollar declines, emerging market stocks do well and vice versa. In the 2008 to 2016 time period, when emerging markets really struggled relative to developed markets, the dollar rallied 40%. Again, in 2018 and 2020, the dollar rallied on really unpredictable trade policy and its likely dampening effect on economic growth. But the dollar turnaround has contributed to sudden signs of life in emerging market stocks. This was triggered first by our global scorecard back in May, and, and the scorecard continues to point to opportunities in emerging market equities. For more, feel free to visit us on your terminal at bi space stox go or go to bi go for all of your research needs. Thanks so much for joining me and enjoy the rest of your conference.